I take my hat off to you. You're the smart people, you could be everywhere, but you're here discussing the future of agriculture or global aid or how to do this uh, a better way. So I think this is quite incredible. It's quite fantastic. Now the question is, we are maybe 70 people here. How could we be 140? I left you with this challenge for next year. How could we be not 70, but 140? This is one big thing we have to think about. Because if we need to go from now to everybody is a change maker, well, there is a long path to walk together. How could we be more, many more? I am a shock ambassador. I go around talking to many, many people, especially young people. I explain to them that it's wonderful to be a football player, but it's even more wonderful to be a social entrepreneur because now it's even cooler. It's cooler. Not only for the reason that has been said already in this, you know, desk. There are more capital for social entrepreneur. Luis Guirvete is here. He is the living proof that creative people are trying to put money in the hands of social entrepreneurs. Great. And then there is technology. We are closer to one another. We can create teams of teams. We can collaborate. We can participate. It's very cheap and very easy. And we can, um, you know, prototype innovations very cheaply, very fast. It's so fast to do a prototype of a new service, of a new product. We can do this very well. So it's a great time to be a social entrepreneur. But there is a reason why it's even more cooler and it is influence. I love the word influence because it's more important than anything else today. Influence is more important than money. Influence is more important than time. Influence is more important than anything else. And what I love now is the influence that the social entrepreneurs are having, really. Look at the big problems. Education, for example. Who is he able to solve problem of education? Do you know, look at the six continents. Many, many, many public systems of school are under reform. The government are not able to reform education. It's too entangled. It's impossible. And corporations are trying to do something. And they're trying to intervene in education, but we don't see any significant but the corporation interests. So who is reforming education? Social entrepreneurs, but with great influence and great impact. Look at education. Look at, the, at the, what is moving in education. And are the social entrepreneurs changing education? Something that you think it is intractable, but it is being resolved. Look at Salman Khan. You know the Khan Academy. Millions of mathematics lessons seen online, used in every school, in every corner of the world. He was a, a social entrepreneur. He was a, ba a banker. He left bank. He's now a social entrepreneur. Look at Wikipedia. Who created Wikipedia? An Ashoka fellow. Sorry for saying Ashoka. An Ashoka fellow. Jimmy Wales. You know, is that, is that transforming the world or it isn't transforming the world? Or um, Vicky. What's the name of this woman in Colombia? She, Vicky? Vicky Colbert. I mean, she is, she is inventing, she has invented rural schools. Have a look at her model, what she's doing in rural area to teach people not only to read, but to be free people. She is a social entrepreneur. In SEAD, there, is two, there are two incredible Indian women from this program creating a system in India where people come out from college, they are, they are not employable. People come out from college, they are not employable. What do they do? They take these people and they do a gap school. Something that provides these college people with the means to be employable. And I could speak for 20 minutes about the social entrepreneurs that are really having an influence. So, I love that. Influence. You know, because it's, you know, power. I love power and influence, this kind of influence. And you know, I went to the TED conference. 
because I have a collaboration with these people. We do a TED event here local in Madrid. So I go to the conference every year in February. I'm, I'm very fortunate, and I meet very interesting people, and I participate in very interesting debates, and there are a lot of social entrepreneurs there. And anyway, this year you have the classical technological debate of something that happened in Silicon Valley. And the debate is, who is the next Steve Jobs? So there was a debate there. Who is the next Steve Jobs? Uh, is maybe this guy from Facebook? Ah, he's not the same charisma. He's not really being so interesting. He's not emotionally involving, so he's not that one. Is he maybe the um, creator of Twitter? Is he the next Steve Jobs? Ah, Twitter, come on. We are not really talking, I mean, it's huge, but we are not really talking about humanity transformation. So who is the next step Steve Jobs? And I provided my answer, which is the same answer that we provide you now. First idea, these are times of distributed intelligence. I really don't believe in that, that one single person will be able to turn the world around. I don't believe it. Nobody is able to do important things all by himself. It's like the pencil. You know the story of the pencil? The pencil is a very simple thing. But tell, is any one of you able to do a pencil? None, because it's impossible. I don't know about mining. I don't know about design. I don't know about graffiti. I don't know about anything. I don't know about anything. I can only use the uh, pencil. So I always say, the next Steve job is not a person is the distributed intelligence that comes up from network of social entrepreneurs that all belong into the same thing, because I love that idea that they are not individual. They are part of this team of teams. As Bill Drayton always says, we are a team of teams. So for me, you guys, the teams of teams, are the next Steve Jobs. Have a wonderful lunch. A wonderful weekend in Madrid. This city is wonderful, embraces you, and I hope to see you again. Thank you.